Hi, welcome to this instalment of Fishing for the Truth. Thank you for joining me today. This afternoon, I'm off to London to meet a friend of mine, a wonderful man called Alim Jada. Alim and I met last year working on what can only be described as a dream job. We were both involved in the second Mamma Mia film, Here We Go Again. Alim is an actor, a singer, a choreographer. His first language is British Sign Language and he's also a qualified sign language interpreter. Alan wrote a piece recently for The Stage. Now The Stage is a British weekly newspaper and website that covers the entertainment industry but theatre in particular. Alan wrote a piece for them called Theatres Must Consider the Deaf Community Before Using Sign Language. Now this is a world that I'm ashamed to say I'm ignorant about. So I'm meeting up with Alan today to ask him why he wrote that piece, what is it that's going on that needs to be addressed and the issues surrounding the use of sign language. That's where I'm going. I shall see you in a bit. This is my truth. Tell me the truth. Tell me my truth. Tell me what the truth feels like. I'll just slow mo that bit because I like to start my videos with a bit of slow mo and you'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, anyway, I love the fact that. <laughs> Whenever we have chats, we, we choose such epic locations. We so today do. we're in St. James's Park, and when we first had our first Heart to Heart, I mentioned in the introduction that we did the first, the second Mamma Mia film, we were laying underneath the stars in Croatia. Oh my God. And when we also had, the first time we ever, ever had Heart to Heart was when we were filming Dancing Queen on the right. jetty, um, and we were under the tree overlooking yes. the beach. Not too shabby. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just sat talking about relationships. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, God. That was the first time I ever spoke to you properly. Right. We, we sort of sussing each other out. Okay. Um, and then on the beach. That was special, the one on the beach. Anyway, thank you for coming here today. Sure. Um, so before we talk about <clears throat> the piece that you wrote, because um, I was explaining how I'm ignorant to all of this, to the, the subject of, that you're discussing of sign language and the use of it in, I'm assuming not only in theatre but in television and just across entertainment in general. Would it be I, I think most people are naive to it, you know, I, I, I don't... Well, this is of your world. Yeah, I think you, you messaged me, didn't you, and you yeah. to asked me about this and you said, and you, you apologised for being naive to it. And I, I think I said, oh don't, God, don't, don't be sorry. Mm. I, I think there's so many, so many things in this industry that we're completely naive to. And I think we're in a really exciting time at the moment where as we become more diverse as an industry, mm. we have to teach ourselves and we have to right. force ourselves to learn and understand. And we, we all come from little pockets of privilege. Yeah and you're privileged in ways, I'm privileged in ways, and I think it's really important that we we break those barriers down and go, actually, tell me about it, what can I learn? Mm. Um, <clears throat> but also, understanding, I hate using the word political correctness, but understanding what is wrong, and, right. and what's okay, and but then also understanding that it's okay to ask when you don't know. Yeah. Because I. And we'll talk about it later, I'm sure. But what I found from this whole experience, especially talking to people online and just having and being a part of the community, is how many people just are, are, are scared of asking, right? And they're terrified of asking questions. It's like, no, no, ask. Well, how else ask. are you going to know exactly? Yeah. And actually, we want you to ask, right? We, we want to, we want to. We want to educate you, and not we an as in the way. community. The community, of... and you know, I have to be really careful. <clears throat> and I and I, I specifically said in my article, I do not speak for the deaf community, right? Yeah, because I am, I am not deaf. Mm. Full stop. Well, I am actually. I'm slightly hard of hearing this it, but um, only very slightly. But 
I don't I don't see myself as a deaf person. Mm. I, I I'm not I don't advertise myself as a deaf person. So who am I to talk on their behalf? But as someone who is an ally and is someone who does it as a profession mm. uh, and as someone who has grown up with sign language as its first language and his whole family is deaf I have always struggled I've always struggled with my ad identity anyway because I think some some I think a lot of my identity is deaf okay um, <clears throat> so That's interesting. I'm a hearing person that has a deaf identity so I've always struggled to I'm terrible in social situations right if you put me in a group of, uh, a group of deaf people, I, I can sign away and ask questions and, and communicate and I'll be fine. But in, in a group of hearing people, I get massive social anxiety because right. I, 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 don't, I don't really understand the art of... I've got better, I've trained myself, I've had a lot of therapy, um, but I've, I've learned how to communicate. In right. a hearing world. So that's that's where my article came from. It, it came. It, 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 it's me talking from my opinion, mm -hmm. from my point of view, but also talking on behalf of my parents because right. my parents are deaf, but they don't really have a voice. And basically, all sort of stemmed from <laughs> an annoyed, irritated tweet that okay. I put out in the moment. Um, which was about what? Which was the seeing the increase of hearing roles going that require British Sign Language going to hearing actors, rightly so, because it's a hearing role, that don't know BSL or learn it for the job. British Sign Language. British Sign Language. So. Okay. And it basically stemmed from <clears throat> an audition that I went through, went for, one of many that I've been for, where I overheard one of the actors say, um, someone had said, oh, how do you know sign language? And he said, oh, just, I, l I learned a bit from a deaf girlfriend a few years ago. So if I get it, I'll just brush up a bit. And I thought, and he got the job. Okay. And I thought, you have no respect for the language, mm. for the community, for the culture, for what it stands for. And I think the reason I wrote the article, because I wrote that tweet and it, and it got a lot of response and then I was approached by the stage to write an article and I ummed and ahmed for a while and I spoke to my agent because I was really nervous and I think as actors we get really scared of speaking out mm -hmm. because we worry that it's going to work against us. So mm -hmm. I had to really think about how I wanted my voice to be heard and I hope it's come across in a non-aggressive way um, that it's just it, it needs to stop because I think when people choose to use sign language they have to remember that they they represent a whole community mm. and a culture um, and a beautifully rich culture and, and the example I used in the article was it's like employing an actor with very basic English skills in an, in an English role right you know and then expecting yeah. us to to relate to that yeah we, we, we'd watch that and go, oh god, oh god, that, you know. Yeah. And it's exactly the same and, and, and deaf people are going to the theatre and people such as myself are going to the theatre and going, oh god, that's a really poor example and naively a lot of hearing people are watching it going, oh gosh, how wonderful, isn't it wonderful? Mm. Like how gorgeous it looks and it's, does that make sense? Yes, <laughs> it does. well I guess it's also not authentic, is it? Like. Any, any art or any representation of anything needs to be truthful and authentic mm. um, to do it the justice and respect that it deserves, you know. I used an example a little while ago. The beauty, I, I'm i very, very lucky because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a qualified sign language interpreter. So when I'm out of work as an actor, I do that as well. Right. So, and I was in, in a room and I said to the director, and this is a few years ago, I said, why are you using British Sign Language? Well, you've got a deaf actor on board, which is brilliant, but why are you using it? Are you using it 
to improve access and equality or does, does the sign language exist in its own world? Now the easy answer was the latter because right. they were like, oh, it doesn't need to be understood by the audience. It exists in its own world within the play. Okay. So even if the hearing actors within the play that don't know sign language learnt a bit and they and they, they got through a bit of a conversation with them, that's okay because that's realistic with the world. And I said, let me give you an example. As an Indian, because I'm half Indian, if you cast me as in your play, and said we have an Indian in the piece and it's a, it's a complete white cast and you've got an Indian or me, half, half Indian. And then you said to me, we have a couple of accessible performances. So normally they're the captioned performances or the interpreted performances. Right. right? And there's only, there's only ever two or three, if lucky. And if you said to me, Alim, your audience can come two nights of the whole thing how would that look? Yeah. That would be racist. Yeah. You're doing exactly the same thing. Right. You're saying your audience to the deaf community, you can only come two nights of the whole run. You can absolutely come any of the nights, but you're not going to understand it. Right. But those two nights, you can come because we are making it accessible for you. Why is it not being, becoming accessible at the beginning? Yeah, is yeah. the question. Yeah. And that was that was my conversation in, in 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 the article. You know, you have to consider by by taking on a deaf person, you deaf person or someone who can sign. There comes there's a big responsibility that comes with it because in turn an audience come. Yeah. An audience get excited. They see themselves on stage and they want to see themselves represented well. Yeah. So my biggest argument wasn't about the deaf thing. I digress. It's a, it was about hearing actors being on stage with poor quality of sign. Right. And then deaf people or myself watching it and going, that's terrible. Yeah, which is, it's interesting because it's, uh, there's no, you can't, you can't kind of counter argue that or disagree with it. You saying it now in clear terms, it makes so much sense. Mm. And yet, it's not something that obviously I've ever thought about before. Mm. But um, what are the what are the steps that haven't there steps already been made because of this? As far as casting and spotlight, spotlight is the um, what would how would you describe it to anybody who doesn't know what spotlight is? Industry directory is it not a directory? It's where you auditions are posted. Yeah, it's like the go-to place for <clears throat> yeah. casting directors yeah. or anybody to see a person's CV, resume of what they've done. And what are the changes that have? Well, since then I've had, had amazing conversations with Spotlight and, 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 and I should say I've tried, been trying to have this conversation for a while and it's been, it's been a long process and right. obviously this article has really helped it move along which is wonderful and they, they have been incredible and they asked my advice and I said look I am here willing to consult with you. Mm. Um, it's very easy for us to just attack the industry and attack directors and attack casting directors mm -hmm. and attack spotlight that's not what i want to do no we're here to educate we're here to have this open conversation and actually a casting director's job is hard because they are trusting when they put out that brief that says we require actors that can sign they are trusting that the actors that are coming forward actually know what they're doing yeah and a lot of the times they're casting them, trusting the actors, and then actually the, the job is appalling. Right. So Spotlight have, have introduced levels, so standards. Okay. So I've explained to them the different standards you can be. So level one and two are sort of basic. Okay. Uh, level three is the equivalent to like conversational French. Okay. Yeah, so you, you, you could get by, mm -hmm. yeah. And then level four, uh, Level five isn't there, don't ask me where that went. <laughs> level, four. level four and level six are, level four is sort of weird in between, but level six is fluent. Okay. And then, but then you also have native and you have coders, which is me. So coder is a child of deaf adults. Okay. But also worth reiterating that just because you're a child of deaf adults, doesn't mean you're going to be the best signer in the world. Okay. My brother, for example, he's only ever been able to get to level three in terms of his exams. Right and I've managed to get qualified. And that's not a reflection on him as a person, but he's just, his ability is just very different. Okay. 
Um, so they've introduced that. So I hope that is going to help casting directors a bit. And we, I was discussing with Spotlight about how to educate them. They've, they've got wonderful training, cast directors, directors of, um, of uh, working with deaf people and sign language. So hopefully that will change. But also, it, 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 the onus also sits with actors. Too many actors, I have noticed, are very quick to just go, I can do it. Yeah, and to be honest and... Yeah, I and mean, you know, at the end of the day, like, work's work, and I know actors are desperate for work. We all are, and we're, we're all just trying to get by, aren't we? I think there's been too many actors that have said to their agents, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that very well, or I can learn, I can learn in a few weeks. Right. And the thing is, you can't learn in a few weeks because, you know, on average it takes about seven to ten years to become wow. really fluent. And that's that's even by immersing yourself into the world. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think actors need to take ownership as well. Actors right. need to know when to say... Because I make a point in the article, which I hope comes across, that like it's okay to cast someone with basic sign language. If you knew basic sign language, I'm not saying you can't be cast in the role. Yeah. But you need to be vettered by a deaf person. Right. To, someone needs to be there in the room to go, she's pulling our leg. Yeah. Or actually, she is basic. Because there are so many characters that are basic. Yeah. You know, we could have a Nia. Yeah, there's a place for yeah, them. Yeah, we but, could have a, yeah. a, a part for Nia that, is, that knows a bit of basic sign language. And yeah. that's fine. But, yeah. But you need to have someone vetting the person. Right. There's been music videos by big, big artists okay. that got released a few years ago with someone who was, wasn't good enough. And then, right. furthermore, and this is so political, but wasn't even moving their lips. Okay. Uh, the person didn't even move their lips. And that is the like, biggest taboo in you know, the community because a lot of the expression of what you're trying to say right. comes from the face. Yeah. It's not just hands. Yeah. It's a combination of hands, or the face, or the, um, non-manual features we call it, it's NMF, things come from the body, yeah. you know, where you push your body, your placement, there's so much to it and the video you can't make any sense of it. That's so interesting, so what, what <coughs> in your opinion, what, what effect does it have on a deaf person who would be watching that video to see their language represented in that way? Well, again, I can't speak for them, but, no, of course, I, but... for me, and, and well, I, I tell you who I can speak of on behalf of my mum and dad, for example. Okay. <clears throat> I've sat in rooms so many times with them where they'll go and they will tell me about such and such, or there is a, there's a, there's a, there's a BBC program and they have got the guest uh, actor who knows a bit of sign language. Great, wonderful, let's watch it. And to see their face deflate is so heartbreaking because right. it's about representation you just want to be you want the world to see you for who you are in the best what form possible right and i think especially in tv they have a bigger responsibility in the film for example mm -hmm. they have a bigger responsibility to represent communities well is that because they're reaching a wider audience or why do you say a bigger responsibility because it's seen by so many more yeah. people yeah i think theater is where it starts which mm -hmm. is wonderful but it doesn't sadly reach yeah. the the corners of the world or the country that we want it to reach mm -hmm. um but tv and film is so accessible and we we watch things in an instant yeah uh streaming it or whatever and i think if we want to encourage a change, we have to make sure representation's there. There was a conversation about LGBT representation, you know, years ago. You'd, you'd never see it. You would never see it. And now it's about, you know, the more the more it's seen, the more it's understood, the mm -hmm. more it's questioned, the more it's accepted. Mm -hmm. And that is the same for this, for the, because, you know, it's not, there's two things here. It's not just the deaf community that need to be seen. It's also the sign language community, which, which are, which are which are interchangeable they they are one but they're also they're independent in their own right because you know i'm not a deaf person but i'm very much a part of the sign language yeah. community and and you know that is a that is a world that deserves to be represented properly absolutely um because it people don't realize the knock-on effects 
it has politically. <clears throat> BSL finally got recognised as a language only a few years ago. Um, okay. Uh, so it. And so that's that's what I mean about politically, but it still doesn't have its own rights, even in terms of having interpreters. Mm. Um, so many deaf people are stopped or don't have access to the basic right we would assume of a sign language interpreter because the money's not in place or because of cuts right. or because someone just says, Oh, I don't need to book one. But if those rights if those if those rights were in place, we could turn around and go, No, actually, you need to book yeah. a sign language interpreter. So it goes back to representation. If, yeah. it's represented, if it's represented well, we lead a high good example which then can in turn be transferred into our politics. And make it wow, it's so interesting. Yeah. The, the, like you say, the ripple effect. It's not what you think is going to be a conversation about one thing, all of a sudden there's like a massive umbrella, isn't there? Yeah, and it is awkward because you there, there is an argument on both sides, which I've, all, which I've been really privy to. You, we've seen so many times MPs going to the House of Commons and learning a bit of sign language, and there's always a bit of a, a, a bit of an uproar and a bit of a scurry about whether that's morally right or not, okay. because it's very poor representation okay. of the language because it's very clunky, it's very basic. However, you could also argue that it's wonderful because it's getting seen yeah so but th that's in itself but then when we discuss the industry we have the ability as an industry to change lives and open eyes absolutely and open the mind we have a responsibility to um, to make a change and yeah. and and a lot of things we do do have a ripple effect and do make a change and a lot of people do leave going oh god politics aside it's so much more important especially in tv and film and the and even theatre it's just in the industry in general because if we if we if we if we see it at the standard it's supposed to be we understand the, stand, the standard it's all supposed to be at right okay because as someone, you know, I, I've grown up fighting and fighting and fighting my mum and dad to have an interpreter, to be able to speak on behalf of my mum and dad. Um, and it's always been, it's always been really hard. Part. That was going to be one of my other questions about what it was like growing up and the... <laughs> uh, wonderful. You yeah. know, I, I think a lot of people they go, oh, I had a lot, especially being young. Oh God, you know, that must have been really hard. I didn't know any different. No, of course. So, and actually, the older I've got, the more I've come to realise, God, how privileged am I? I am one of the luckiest guys in the world. Not only only have I got a beautiful, rich language, I also identify as someone who's culturally deaf as well at times. Right. And I'm privy to a world that not many people are privy to. Mm. Um, but, yes, it was hard. I'm not, you know, it was hard. Um, I very much got given the responsibility of, of, of managing things for my parents. Uh, not because they expected, but because they had to. They didn't have an option. Right. Because uh, English isn't their first language, so their letters would have to be translated into sign language. Um, because they couldn't just pick up the phone and call someone because God, they didn't make it accessible for them. So yeah. I would always have to call on their behalf. Um, and I still have it now. I still, you know, only the other day I had a massive argument with a credit card company and they said, sorry, you can't make this particular amendment on the account because you're only third party. Right. You don't have power of attorney. And I said to him, I said, but, I don't want to be power of attorney and I don't think my dad wants me to be power of attorney yeah. because that's immediately giving up all of his rights Yeah. Um, and that should be his decision you know, Absolutely. You know, I'm going to turn around to him and say you're going to have to give me power of attorney now, but the only way around it is for him to actually give me power of attorney um, wow. which we've, we've, we're going through the process of but 
I did feel as if I was playing catch up with myself. I sort of feel like I'm at a place in my life now, I'm 27, where everything sort of steadied out. Okay. When I was 18, I would never get on with the people my age. Right. I would always get on with people a lot older than me. Yeah. Um, is that I, because of the responsibility that you I had? I think, think so, and I was used to discussing mortgages, and I was just <laughs> used to discussing bills. And yeah, not your average kind of subject <laughs> for really. an 18-year-old. Uh, so now I sort of feel like I'm evened out a bit, yeah. and I understand the world a bit more, and I can speak to everyone a little bit better, and I think I understand myself a little bit more as a hearing person. Um, but it was hard, yeah. Is there anything that those of us who aren't British Sign Languages, or that those of us who aren't deaf what can we what can we do apart from have these discussions and and is there is there anything learn okay <laughs> i would encourage everyone to learn learn as in literally learn it literally learn the sign okay. literally learn sign language i we we got as a community we've been campaigning for you've probably seen it for british sign language to be introduced into the curriculum yes right uh, and it's been rejected so many times do you think? Oh, because well, they, they don't understand and they refuse to understand the importance of it. And they, even my mum and dad were saying, I've spoken to so many friends of mine that are deaf that say, oh my God, wouldn't it be lovely if everyone could just sign? Yeah. And there is a beautiful, um, there's a beautiful video online, I can't remember the name, but I'm sure you can Google it and find it, where this guy, uh, they get a small little town and they teach everybody to sign. And this is one deaf guy who they film, he goes to the coffee shop, and the coffee shop guy, he goes, I'm deaf, and the guy says, in sign language, oh, what would you like? Uh, what coffee would you like? And you see his face just go, oh, oh, great. Okay, cool, great, you can sign. And he answers, and then he leaves the shop, and someone walks past him and says, hey, hey, how are you? And it is the most wonderful video because for someone who has been isolated for so many years mm. become a part of society and I'm not mm. saying deaf people aren't part of society they very much are very independent but just by learning the basic ability of level one you know my partner's learning level one and it's honestly it's changed the way he thinks right. just being able to just introduce yourself being able to ask how someone is being able to ask someone how they're feeling, you know, it immediately just, it, 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 it shifts the dynamic of power yeah. between, because at the moment it lies with the hearing people, yeah. and it just shifts that dynamic of power into more of a equal footing. Yeah. And, you know, no one's expecting you to become a fluent sign language user. <laughs> and, and, you know, and we, you don't have to be, it's but... A, a phrase that's thrown around a lot at the moment called hearing. <gasps> would it be wonderful to just have a bit of sign language in it, you know, and it looks so wonderful aesthetically and it's like, well, it's not, it's not a form of dance, you know, it yeah. really isn't a form of dance, it, it's a language. It's a language. It's a language. Yeah. And the yeah. only reason it, it's so different from any other language is because it's visual. Yeah. Um, but going back to my partner, since he's learned level one, the way he interacts with the world, I don't think he even realises, but I've noticed is so different. He is so much more expressive. He he, just, he can look at someone and pick up on slight isms and slight putting on the face. And he is more in tune with himself, but also in tune with the world around him. And I think because when you learn how to, and especially as dancers, I've noticed dancers are, they, they're the best ones to learn. Right because I think their brains connect to movement in that level. But the second you learn the sign language, it forces you to, to, to see people in a different way because you're picking up on every movement. Which can only ever be a good thing, oh to God. open your eyes further and to see people. Absolutely. Everyone wants to be seen. Yeah, absolutely. And heard. Yeah. And understood. Yes, yes, Heard's yes. a bad probably word to use, but yeah. to be understood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's the best way of learning? I'm sure, like anything, there are um, good ways of learning and probably um, not so good. 
I don't think there's I don't think there's bad ways of learning. Okay, I think, I it's think, not like you can get into bad habits. Yes, or... you can. There's okay. lots of bad habits. Sign language is a really reactive language, so you, you can only really learn with someone. Okay. Um, because as I said earlier, it's not just about the hands. There's, so, there's something called NMF, so non-manual features. So where your body's positioned, what you're doing in your body, or your facial expressions. Uh, that's all a part of the language that actually you can only really learn in a sort of three-dimensional setting. Right. You know, not not 2D. Um, not saying it can't be done, but, but you know, on, I would always encourage people to learn a level one, you know, okay. which is on average about £300. You can learn, the London-based ones are uh, City Lit, Remark, okay. uh, two different places there. But if you go on to Signature, which are the examining body, uh, I think it's like signature to order. I'll, I'll put like it that. at the bottom of the screen. They, you literally pop your postcode in, it'll tell you a closer centre. Right. Um, and you can learn level one. But if you don't have money, there are online courses, uh, which you need to be careful about because you don't know what you're getting. Okay. It can be quite expensive. But there are YouTube videos, um, and there are actually what I would personally encourage there are um, freelance deaf ESL tutors out there as well. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I would always encourage any hearing person to, to learn to sign. Because if you can, you know, level one, great, you know the basics. If you can get to level three, even better. Level three, you can have a basic conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something that I've never considered doing. And it seems... It seems not shameful, but I can't, under, I can't understand now why it's never occurred to me. Because it's a, it's a whole part of our it's probably because you it's a, a whole part of our society but ask yourself how many times have you met a deaf person exactly yeah you know it's not something you will come across every day mm. um you know in comparison to me it's, it's part of my life every day mm. um so that's why most people don't consider it yeah um but a stat that's useful to think about, food for thought, is that 90% of deaf children... Nine zero. Nine zero, are born into hearing families or from... Wow. ...to hearing parents. Gosh. So, actually, the, the chances of us, or maybe not me because I've got deaf parentage, but let's say both of us had no history of deafness in right. the family at all, the chances of us having a deaf child Mm. Are, are a lot higher than a deaf couple having a deaf child. I can't explain it, I don't know why. Wow. But, gosh. So, you know, so why are we, you know, why are you not learning that? There is yeah. a wonderful actor I know. Um, she's just got a wonderful job, which only the other day, which I'm so pleased about. With it. Amazing, a high profile company. Um, who actually, funny enough, I was involved in the. Uh, I was interpreting for their auditions and they it was, just happened to be at the same time my article came out right and they did it they did everything right they had right. a deaf person in the room that was vetting the sign language they had deaf actors coming in and then they realized very quickly they went oh god this, this deaf person is going to be the only deaf person in the company what is that going to do for that deaf person's morale if they can't even communicate right. with hearing actors that don't sign why don't we get actors that can sign in the room? And right. I thought, oh my God, you are amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah, yeah. And they literally have set the standard of how it should be done. Yeah. Um, and I, I want that to carry on. Um, yeah. But going back to her, she, she, her mum and dad are deaf, sorry, hearing. Uh, I don't believe there are any exposures to deaf community. She, um, they learned to sign. Right. And she, I think she would she would class herself as bilingual, she's English and sign language okay. most, but her world's opened up because they have allowed her to access a world and uh, a world of, of language and communication that right. not many people can access because they can't sign, so they can't express themselves. Right. Um, which is why I keep going back to saying I am one of the luckiest people in the world because I can express myself in two different languages yeah. and I express myself in a language that is in common. And is, well it's called British Sign Language I guess for a reason, does sign language vary 
throughout the world mm. as other languages do. Yeah, for every language you have, there is, there is a, a sign language variation. Okay. But then it goes further than that. Even within the UK, there's variations where you go. Really? So there'll be Welsh, there'll be like Scotland, re there'll right, be regional okay. sign, sign language, wow. yeah. I mean, British Sign Language, you can normally understand everyone in the United right. Kingdom, uh, but there'll be variations. So normally you'd be like, oh, watch that sign, and they'll say, oh, it's Welsh, it's this, and you go, oh, okay, you know. A bit like, I guess, um, what happens with regional sayings or, or dialects, and dialects yeah, or yeah, slang yeah. or, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's, there is a wonderful language called uh, International Sign Language, which is just a sort of an agreed collection of visual signs so everyone no matter where you're from can understand each other wow that's amazing which i cannot do okay uh, i would never claim to be able to do it um so, so here you go this is this is an example i could very easily as an actor have gone yeah i can do i can do international i can i can i can learn right. i could learn i could but i wouldn't be able to represent it as well yeah. as a deaf person who has been doing international all their life. Yeah. Um, so there's an example for you. Fascinating. Fascinating and eye-opening. And I think, without getting too deep, I think anything in today's world that helps us to open our eyes more is a good thing. You know, to see people for who they are and to understand people better. and. I agree. It can there, only be good. There was a there was a program on telly <clears throat> uh, a little while ago. Going back to the conversation I was having about being able to make a change mm -hmm. and make a difference. There's a program, a very well known, high profile program, that had the opportunity to really show how things are supposed to be done, okay. and they completely failed. So, for example, there was uh, a deaf person in the piece. And uh, the person in it says, oh, she's deaf, I'll get an interpreter. And I watched it and I went, oh! And I was literally screaming at the television. I went, amazing! Yeah. And then they came back with the receptionist or, or a member of staff that did a little bit of sign language. Right. And I thought, oh my God, oh my God. You have just not only embarrassed yourselves, but you've embarrassed me, you've embarrassed the community. Yeah. And you've made it look acceptable yeah. to do that. Well, actually, what they could have done is, oh, I've been on the phone for ages, I can't book an interpreter. Right. Which happens a lot. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, tell uh, the truth of that situation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, I've, I've got someone here um, who knows a little bit. Would this be okay? Yeah. No, it's not acceptable because it's a medical setting. Okay, let me work on it. And then bring a qualified interpreter in. Yeah. Immediately, you're making a political statement yeah. and a comment that is shifting things. Mm. Because the amount of times I've been in hospitals where I have had to interpret. Wow. And it's extremely common for coders, children, deaf adults, that you know we or even just people that can sign that have a deaf person in the family that have been forced to sign in a situation you know, I've had to tell I told my mum and I hate to say woe is me but I told my mum that my her mum had died right in sign language via the nurse that's not my job yeah. and that in turn had a del had had a massive psychological impact and i didn't it had a knock-on effect on my grieving process because i became interpreter and i became detached from the situation yeah and everything was just like is my mum okay or more so is my client okay you know yeah. does she have the information can she can she ask the question she needs to ask when actually was like hold on my grandma's dead in front of me yeah why is there not an interpreter that was brought in yeah and they called us a few times to say you, you need to come to the hospital they clearly she had died a while before so they had enough of a window and listen i know as an interpreter it's not as easy as just picking up the phone and getting an interpreter yeah. you know they're very booked up but it's possible and there's agencies within hospitals to be able to just get an interpreter last minute okay you might have to wait a little bit but if they knew if they knew for a few hours mm. they could have got that interpreter in waited for us to arrive 
and to live at the news. So that you can be Alan's grandson, grieving family member yes. as opposed to... Yeah, exactly. And going back to this programme, I... They had, I was so heartbroken, I was so let down because I just thought you had an opportunity to either A, show the impact of the political crisis we're in at the moment where cuts are being made left, right and centre and so therefore interpreters aren't so readily available, right. which isn't the truth. Yeah. Or you could have ignored that, ignored the drama and just gone, we've got an interpreter for you. Right. Wonderful. The amount of people that would, would have watched that and gone, great, I understand. Yeah. Because by by having, bringing in a qualified interpreter who knows what they're doing or having someone who's just a little bit sticky makes you wonder how much respect they have for the language of the community and the difficulty of themselves. Yeah. You know? So that was heartbreaking to watch. But that happens all the time. I talk, I talk about this happening, you know, this guy sometimes happened to me. It happens all the time. Sadly. Even within my personal life, it happens all the time. Thankfully, we're getting a lot better. Okay. We are changing. Uh, interpreters are respected a lot more, which is right. wonderful. Uh, as a profession, and uh, standards are in place, and, and most of the time, you know, now I sort of I notice I don't need to be there as quick as I needed to be. Okay. Because normally there's, a, there's an interpreter in place. So now, like, uh, you know, a few months ago, my my dad went into hospital. I got FaceTime for my mother and she said the interpreter's here and I went oh wonderful okay and I thought okay cool and I could have this conversation via FaceTime with the interpreter with the doctor um, so it's getting better I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it's not happening at all but you know they had an opportunity to really, really do something they did it. and that's, that goes back to my point of making political changes yeah and we have the power to do that as an industry yeah. as artists mm. we can make change with yeah. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And hopefully that this will um yeah, this will reach people and, and resonate with people and hopefully make people think a little bit differently or open their eyes up or I hope so and I It can't it can't hurt. It can't hurt. We want people to talk, we want people to ask questions. Okay. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And next time I see you, you'll have like the Simon Cowell smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my teeth done.